Good morning, everyone. We will be in a moment celebrating the triumph of orthodoxy. Last week, if you recall, I mentioned something from the book of, uh, by Fyodor Dostoevsky, The Idiot, and uh, in it, that main character, so such a simple man, open-hearted, good-natured, he said something that is kind of uh, enigmatic, I guess you would say. Uh, he, he said, beauty will save the world. Beauty will save the world. It's a compelling statement. And I'm not even sure, I'm not even 100% sure what that means. But one thing I know is that for nearly 150 years, orthodoxy was without beauty. You know, today we politicize virtually everything. We politicize masks, we politicize vaccines, we politicize abortion, we politicize everything. Everything has to be 50-50. You, you have to be one side or the other. It is so distressing to my soul. I don't understand it, why it has to be this cultish thing and, and you demonize the other side. And every, it just drives me out of my mind. But, you know, back in the 8th and 9th century, Iconography itself was politicized. And you had emperors getting rid of icons, defacing them on the walls and getting rid of them in the churches altogether. Um, there's a couple of reasons at least for this. One is that people were actually making, making idols out of the icons. So, you know, they, there was a, they had a right to say, hey, that's not right. That icon is not God. The Bible is not God. You know, God is God. All these things are here to help us get closer to God, but they are not God themselves. And so some people were making them like idols. And so the emperors were concerned, and they had a point. And so the church was forced to, you know, define itself about what icons are, and it did. The other reason uh, for getting rid of the icons is because now all of a sudden you had Muslims coming in and influencing the Christians and saying, we don't allow images at all. And so that mentality, it's so easy to be influenced, my friends. You have to, you have to know who you are and not be so easily influenced. So, you know, they, they got rid of these icons for 150 years. The church was without beauty. It was women. The fate of the church, the fate of beauty, lied or laid in the hands of women. Two women in particular. Empress Irene, who was an enigmatic figure herself, I mean, I'm telling you, this woman, Western morality and, you know, that kind of spirituality would call her conniving and uh, manipulative and they question her motherhood and all these things. But you know what? The Orthodox Church calls her a saint because she restored icons. By hook or crook, I don't care, she restored the icons. Another woman, the, the same thing happened in the next century. After she was deposed, you had another woman step up. Her husband got rid of icons. He died, just like in the 8th century. Uh, Irene's husband took away icons. When he died, she restored them. 9th century, same thing happened. Her husband, Theophilus, got rid of icons. She comes in and overdoes, overturns uh, her husband's uh, edict, both called ecumenical councils. Today, we are able to celebrate beauty. Today, we are able to honor womanhood. There, 
they have something within them that can make this world beautiful. We celebrate womanhood today. We celebrate beauty. We celebrate orthodoxy today. And we glorify God for it. At this time, I would like to... Um, now, because these days are so crazy, I don't know what's what here, but uh, we hope that some of the children brought some icons. And if so, we'd like you to line up. Is that Shay back there? Yes. Line, line up behind Miss Shay. And Miss Shay is going to um, have you, and even if you're adults, if you have an icon, join the party. But line up back there. And Miss Shea is going to march you toward us, and then we are going to march around the church in celebration of the triumph of orthodoxy. Don't, don't, for, don't forget the microphone after the microphone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Till, oh, give that to her, but you wait. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Eleisonimas o Deus, kada do megaleos o Deo mithas o epakos on ke eleison, kyrie eleison, kyrie Again, we pray for all pious and orthodox Christians. Again, we pray for Archbishop Alexios and all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God, all pious and orthodox Christians, those who reside and visit in this city, the members, council members, contributors, and benefactors of this holy church. Amen. 
Again, we pray for the blessed memory and eternal repose of your departed servants, emperors, patriarchs, hierarchs, priests, higher monks, deacons, monks, and all our departed faithful and orthodox Christians everywhere in the world, fathers, forefathers, grandparents, great-grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters, and relatives. Again, we pray for the protection of this holy church, this city and every city and town, from wrath, famine, pestilence, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, foreign invasion, civil strife, accidental death, that our good and loving God may be merciful and gracious and favorable to us, and that he may turn away and keep all wrath and disease that moves against us. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth, those who are far off at sea. Be gracious toward our sins, O Master, and have mercy on us, for you are a merciful and loving God. To you we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. As the prophets beheld, as the apostles have taught, as the church has received, as the teachers have declared, as the world has agreed, as grace has shone forth, as truth has been revealed, as falsehood has been dispelled, as wisdom has become manifest, as Christ awarded, thus we declare, thus we affirm, thus we proclaim Christ our true God and honor his saints in words, writings, thoughts, sacrifices, churches, and holy icons, on the one hand, worshiping and reverencing Christ as God and Lord, and on the other, honoring the saints as true servants of the same Lord of all, and offering them proper veneration. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith of our fathers. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith on which the world is established. Therefore, with fraternal and filial love, we praise the heralds of the faith, those who with glory and honor have struggled for the faith. And we say to the champions of orthodoxy, faithful emperors, most holy patriarchs, hierarchs, teachers, martyrs, and confessors, may their memory be eternal. Let us beseech God that we may be instructed and strengthened by the trials and struggles of these saints which they endured for the faith even unto death, and by their teachings entreating that we may to the end imitate their godly lives, may we be deemed worthy of obtaining our request through the mercy and grace of the great founder and first hierarch Christ our God, through the intercessions of our glorious lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with the divine angels and of all the saints. Amen.
children. Uh, why don't you raise up your icons and come in a little closer so we can get a better picture. Can we bunch up? Is that okay? I hope it's okay. Bunch up here. I'm going to take one more, t take some more pictures here. Smile. <laughs> okay. Now, our, our children are maturing. I remember when we've done this in the past, and everybody's wiggling around and having ADD and everything, and something's happened to our children here. <laughs> anyway, thank you, children. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to call up a couple of our... And I'll take that. This is uh, Saint Irini, by the way. One of my favorites. Uh, actually, it goes in the front. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a short, short little program for the um, pre-celebration of the 200-year uh, independence of uh, Greece. And so I'm going to call up Yasonas and Violeta Stratus. Yasonas and Violeta Stratus to offer their little poems. You can take it off. Yeah. Ikostipempi Martiu. Chronio pola metrita iten esclavomeni. E omor via lada mas puineti mimeni. Mia mera sanke simera ta thana ta pediatis. Ola mazi orkisti kanyatine lafteriatis. Polemi sanke niki san se talas eskeori. Ελλάδα, δεν χορτένουν να βλέπω τον ήλιο που το φως του σκορπάει στην πλάση. Δεν χορτένουν να βλέπω τους κάμπους, τα βουνά, τις πλαγιές και τα δάση. Δεν χορτένουν να ζω... Oh, δεν χορτένουν να... να βλέπω τα δέντρα, τις πηγές, τη μικρή μας πλατεία. Δεν χορτένουν να ζω, να αναπνέω στην ωραία αυτή η πολιτεία. Δεν χορτένω να βλέπω ακρογιάλια και πανόρια νησιά στην Αράδα. Δεν χορτένω να βλέπω σένα, ο πατρίδα Ελλάδα, Ελλάδα. Thank you so much, children. We needed to hear something from that side of things, and I thank you for stepping up and doing it. And I thank your parents. God bless you. God bless you today, my friends. And uh, I, I wish I could say I'll see you next door, but. Let me tell you, uh, at 5 p.m. today, I would like to see so many of you on that call. Uh, Presbytera Melanie Di Stefano will be speaking to our Goyans, but I, I want to see a lot of you. Please, 5 o'clock, I'll send out a listserv to give you the link as well. It'll be a beautiful calling, uh, and it is uh, an, our calling, just as the, the Theotokos received her divine calling in the church I was at previously. It used to be over here, that's why. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, please join us at 5 o'clock. God bless you. <laughs>